something is likely holding you back from reaching your full potential. And this is something that I've struggled with my whole career, and I've seen many other developers do it too. By the way, if you're watching this on the same day I published this video, I'm actually on a holiday. But through the magic of scheduling, there's still a video for you today. How neat is that? Anyway, so it's, it's going to be a slightly different video, not really a code example video like I regularly do, but yeah, maybe something more of a story. I worked in academia for a long time. Basically my whole career has been in academia. And in 2016, I was kind of fed up with it. And I wanted to go into the startup world. So I was going to launch a startup. And we, I actually did that. So I left the university and I created a company together with uh, an ex-colleague from the university. And we wanted to create a sort of a website builder for musicians. The actual product doesn't really matter. Um, and of course, at that time I had to make then a lot of technology decisions. So I did a lot of programming before that, mostly in an academic context, making uh, tools to support uh, research and stuff like that. Um, but I was also kind of full of myself, you know, I'm the guy with the PhD, so I'm smart, I'm gonna figure out everything, I don't have to listen to anybody. So when I was looking at technology to use for that website builder, I came across React. And uh, it was kind of new at that time, it was not really the default choice for things. So I took a quick look at it and I basically dismissed it kind of right away without really properly evaluating it. Because I thought, well, you know, we're doing something that's so special. I know better how to do that than the people who develop React. So um, I'm going to build that myself. So of course, what happened is that, well, we built the product, but it ended up being way too complicated. Uh, it was so much work building everything that was not the core of the thing that as a new company we wanted to deliver. So it, it, one of the reasons it failed was because of that. It was just too complicated, too much. So I definitely learned a lesson then. But there is something deeper going on here, and that's something that affects many developers, and that's assumptions. We so often make the wrong assumptions, or we make way too many of them. And that happens all the time. You know, you, you get used to a certain way of working, a certain kind of tool set that you're using, and you're not open to change it anymore. It's not so easy anymore as you get older. You assume, basically, if you see something that's different from what you use, that it's wrong. And I do it myself as well. I mean, I still do it. I was very uh, skeptical, for example, of AI coding tools for a long time because I just assumed they wouldn't work properly. And when I now do a front-end project, I tend to use React by default because that, well, that's what I know. But there are plenty of other frameworks out there that might actually be a better choice. In general, it's the problem that as people, but as developers specifically, we tend to stick with what we know and what we're comfortable with. Perhaps you also recognize that feeling when you hear someone talk about a topic that you're enthusiastic about, but you don't agree with them. You just assume that they're wrong instead of placing what they're saying outside of your own context. But that is actually scary, doing that. It's easier to just make the assumption that they're wrong. And what makes it easy is that we use labels to put things into little boxes that we understand. Uh, I, I see this in the comment section on my videos all the time. When I do a few videos where I use a more functional style of programming, I get Ariane hates classes comments. So you put me in the box. Ariane doesn't like classes, he only likes functions. Or when I explain design patterns, I get comments saying that I shouldn't turn Python into Java. In the end, those are all labels. And what they actually do is they make you feel uh, comfortable because you don't have to question your assumptions. And the labels simply make it easier to understand things because you just simplify things, basically. It doesn't matter if that's accurate or not. 
And I also get it, like assumptions, they are actually important. They're a survival mechanism, right? I mean, in prehistoric times, we, we had to make assumptions because that actually saved our lives. We assumed that that tiger is hostile. So, you know, let's stay clear of it instead of walking up to it and saying, oh, you're a cute little tiger, aren't you? Also, we didn't have to change them all too often. You know, a tiger is always going to be dangerous and that berry is still going to be poisonous. 10 years from now. But what's different from the past is that we are in a period where things actually change all the time, especially for us software developers. In order to survive nowadays, in order to keep our jobs, in order to stay relevant, we need to make sure to question our assumptions because they may no longer be valid. And being a software developer, being in this industry means that you need to continuously identify or be aware of where you're labeling things, where you're oversimplifying things and what your assumptions are. This is actually what makes you learn. It's what makes you grow as a person. And it's also not something that you just do for a few days and then you're done. It's a lifelong struggle. I'm still working on that and I will probably need to do that until the day I die. But I do have one huge privilege and that's you when i post something on this youtube channel you point out where i missed something or why something i said is not accurate it's important that you keep doing that it not only made me learn more than i could have imagined i mean it's been an amazing journey so far but it's kept me sharp and it has tremendously helped me in making better videos so I want to thank you for showing up, for watching the videos, for being critical and sharing your thoughts in the comments. I don't always respond, but I do listen. My videos, they're not perfect and they're never going to be. But here's my promise to you. I'll always try to make the next video better than the one before. Now, before I finish with this video, I have a question. I'd like you to think about an assumption you've had for a long time that you recently had to reevaluate. Maybe you realize that you've been using a programming technique that's been holding you back, or perhaps someone you know is a different person than you thought. What did it make you feel like when you realized that? And how did letting that assumption go feel like after the dust settled? Let me know in the comments. You know, sometimes it's good to take a step back from our daily work and think about stuff like this. I'm going back to my holiday to do just that and enjoy some time off with my family. Next week, that's going to be a regular video again. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and see you then.